What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here at Design Academy and today we're going to be making some backdrop components. So we'll be building out the backdrop com components, overviewing them first, building them out, applying the proper constraints, and we're really going to need to understand and consume these components first. So if we go ahead and click on the backdrop documentation there, um, that'll open up in your default browser and a backdrop appears behind all other surfaces in an app displaying contextual and actionable content. And one thing to note currently, um, as of the date in this recording, uh, September 10th, 2020, Thursday, um, this is currently in beta. Therefore, for developers referencing this, uh, currently there is no status around when this will be developed for the following platforms, Android, iOS, web, and the Flutter framework. Um, so that is important to note. Uh, and also, the backdrop is composed of two surfaces, right? So we have the back layer, which is the, the blue looking layer there, right here, this top app bar element, which is what it essentially looks like. And then the front layer, which is the, has this white background and utilizes a little bit of elevation, whether you can see it or not. And the back layer displays actions and context, and these control and inform the front layer's content. So whatever is on the background dictates the front layer's content, and that is important to note there. And it also utilizes an optional divider under the subtitle right there as we continue to analyze this backdrop component. And here is the anatomy breakdown of this backdrop component. It consists of a back layer, the front layer, and an optional subheader and divider there, as you can see. And either the back layer or the front layer can be active at a time, so only one thing can be active either the back layer or the front layer. And when the back layer is active, this, this front layer drops down, utilizing motion. So here you can see that it's a fixed area, or at least that's an optional way to utilize the subheader as a fixed area with content to scroll through and whatnot. And I highly recommend uh, going through the rest of this and reading it and understanding the behavior. Right here you can see that the front layer, uh, the back layer, just lies on the surface and the front layer uh, utilizes elevation. It's uh, one dip on the Z index. Uh, uh, one pixel on the Z index is also another way to reference it on the web. Um, so that is important to note for our front layer there. And I've already grabbed these screenshots for what we're, for designing these specs here. And you'll notice that it utilizes some list items in this example, uh, which we'll go ahead and kind of um, uh, build so what we can do is go into Figma here. With these screenshots reference, we'll, we'll go ahead and create this generic example, right? So what we have is we can search for app bar in our system. Make sure your library is enabled, the material design system library. And then you can search for app bar. And we have all these variants, right? So the variant we're going to want to use is more than likely this one with page title and you see that it has these other actions as well. And what I wanted to actually do is place this on a parent frame and that parent frame is going to be the utilize the dimensions of the Android phone. So and I'm going to rename this Android phone. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this in here and snap this to the top and left of the parent frame. So great, we have what we need to start. And it also indicates that the background set to blue still. So what we can do is add a primary background color to represent that in our example. And I'm gonna Android F, Android phone backdrop. I'm just gonna rename that real quick to be precise. And what we can do is that this backdrop appears all the way to the top of this this frame here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, add a ruler here in Figma that aligns with the selection here. Get that pixel perfect there. And now with that ruler specified, I can go ahead and create another frame. And in this frame, I'm gonna set the width to, I'm gonna set this to surfaces, surface, the background color and the width to span the entire of the of the screen which is 360 dips. I'm going to snap this to the top and I'm going to go ahead and select independent corners and ensure that the top and left are set to 
16 pixels rounded. So we're achieving that same look here, as you can see right there. And it utilizes a subtitle that has a baseline of 32 dips from, from the top of the front layer. So I'm gonna label this layer, this frame front layer, as that is the background, and there's going to be some text that lives within it. And I'm going to ensure I have a proper text style specified, and that is uh, subtitle. And I'm gonna ensure that the resizing set to auto width to keep that clear and concise. I can snap that to the top and left. It's 16 pixels, 16 dips to the left and I can push this down. And what I wanna do is ensure that the baseline is set to 32 dips right there. So what I can go ahead and do is grab a, whoops, grab a rectangle, grab a rectangle, specify 32 dips there. And then I'm going to have to push this content up so that it aligns, the baselines align. And I can justify that and double check with a ruler and we are good to go, that baseline is there. And one thing this optionally utilizes is a divider. So we'll go ahead and add that from the get-go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and search for divider in my assets. And then I can go ahead and pull this divider in from my system. And the divider is approximately 12 pixels, 12 dips down from the subtitle. And what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm holding Option Command and shrinking this so that it's set to has a padding of 16 dips on the left and right of this of the subheader, which is reflective in in our examples up above. As you can see here, um, it aligns right there that divider. So that's great that that is consistent. So now we have that, and our textile is attached, and everything looks good to go what we can do now is just uh, specify this as our bare bones layout because designers will then go ahead and add in the action the items necessary to this component so we have this this front layer here so if I go ahead and shrink this front layer expanded and we now have a canvas for designers to start adding content onto. So that's super important to note. So this in and of itself could be its very own uh, component. Uh, what I'm gonna do is ensure that this color style specified to active with our high emphasis, also known as high emphasis, and I ensure it has the proper elevation set to one dip so we can slightly see that elevation being utilized now. And with this, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a main component, as this is one variation that designers could use this bare bones layout, uh, copy it, and then start adding their own elements on top of it. Um, I can go ahead and specify the constraints because right now when I stretch it, this doesn't necessarily stick properly. It's always nice to specify that. Um, so I got to set the constraints to left and right. So now when I stretch this, it will stretch properly, the divider that is. So now we have our front layer expanded and you can kind of see the elevation being utilized here. Um, one thing that might be kind of confusing at first creating this uh, front layer that's expanded is that it's a blank canvas, right? So when a designer goes in and uses it, um, I'm gonna align this here. So when a designer goes and uses this, it might be kind of misleading at, at first. So, because what a designer is going to need to do is copy this. Whoops, I'm going to kind of, I swap, I put the instance here, but that's okay. Um, what we can do is go ahead and move that master now to this frame front layer expanded so that's so with that expanded we can go ahead and create the the concealed variant and what i was trying to get it at first is designers will copy that copy this subtitle and go ahead and add other elements onto it so for example uh the list items we created in the last video i can go ahead maybe i want to add into this component 
right? I just need to ensure the proper spacing is specified. So what I want to do is I'm going to have to wrap this into a frame, right? So it's going to be my front front layer expanded with content. So you're going to have to wrap it into a frame, ensure that everything is aligning accordingly. And I'm going to stretch this out to span the full width of this. And then what you can do is then just continue to duplicate these items as needed. Um, so that's great. And ensure that clip content is specified. And with clip content specified, you now have an example with content. Just make sure that the proper padding is set to the top there. So we can go ahead and check that too. See what that padding specified to right here from this list to the top of that divider. And what we can do is always reference our specs. So with our specs referenced, it looks like there's some spacing here. It's not necessarily specified, but we can go ahead and eyeball it. Roughly looks like 24 pixels there. And with that, we can go ahead and make sure that's set to 24, which it almost is entirely. I will just need to move this content down one more pixel. Uh, and we should be good to go there and we have our example so as you can see if we look at this frame it wraps uh, the front layer which is the background with all these list elements added on top of it as there may be several scenarios on how you want to use the the expanded uh, front layer you may want to add other type of content onto this expanded front layer on this backdrop so we'll give you the bare bones layout and give you the freedom to add stuff on top of it. And you can just do that by grouping it as a frame with that content. And we can go ahead and go check out the, the concealed version. And the concealed version refers to uh, this, this front layer now being uh, minimized, which is what I mean by concealed. Material Design calls it concealed. And the height of this is set to, let's see, uh, 48. So with the height set to 48, we can go ahead and specify that here and snap that to the bottom. We now have that set to 48. And I'm still using the same version. I just shrinked it. So what I'm gonna do is detach this uh, and label this front layer concealed and remove that top constraint set that to bottom left and right so that stretches respectively and there won't be a need for a divider in this in this version uh, what there will need to be is an action which is that carrot and I have one of those here um, the up arrow up keyboard arrow so I'm, I'm gonna select that paste it ensure that that is centered here it's centered and we have the padding set to 16 dips on the right, so we're good to go. We now have our concealed uh, front layer variant. I'm gonna go ahead and make that a main component and duplicate this, grab the main component and drag it into our, our canvas there. And it's still utilizing the, the one dip elevation. So that's important to note. And we can even throw it in as a, it's a, as you can see, it's now an example here. And what we haven't specified here is the content for this. So I'm just renaming that. And essentially what you could do is create, add whatever content you need here. Um, so when this is concealed, there the backdrop, the back layer is being utilized. So if we go ahead and pay attention to material designs documentation again, and we look at the anatomy of this backdrop, it has that back layer, right? And the backdrop has, um, a has the original actions and the front layer has actions respective to the actions on this back layer. So we're gonna, we can go ahead and make examples here. So we can go ahead and create these list items. So I can, I'm gonna go ahead and pull I'm gonna go ahead and change, let's see, this to app name. And I'm gonna hide these icons here. 
and I'm, I can even go ahead and swap out this icon to an X. So I could find that exit icon, or better yet, it's probably labeled close. Here we have that close icon, and we want to double check to see if we already have that here, which we do. So it's actually called clear. So I'm going to look for clear here in my material design library and I'm going to drag this here and hold down option command and hover over this icon and it'll swap it and I'll change that to the the active uh, on primary uh, color since this is on the primary surface there and we're good to go just rem remove this hidden or turned off fill there so we have that specified <clears throat> and what we want to go ahead and do now is we can bring in some some list items here. We can bring in the list item that utilizes a icon, this one line variant, right? And what we could even do is uh, remove the background. We can change the color of the text to content on primary surface. And now we have the ability to, to, we have the ability now to, let me push this content up a couple. So now this directly snaps to the top app bar. And we have the ability to swap the icons now. So instead of using that placeholder, we can use, uh, for example, mail. I can go ahead and swap that icon in here, add the proper color to on primary. And as you can see, uh, we have our items now and I want to actually make sure that that state is set to uh, inactive my apologies so that would be the the it should be utilizing the medium emphasis which isn't a color style right now which we can go ahead and specify in our library so if we if we detach the style and hit uh, 68 there we now have our medium emphasis color style. So if I go ahead and specify uh, content on primary uh, medium emphasis, uh, that could be our new color style there, which would be associated with the others. And long story short, now that we have this created, we need to change the height of this list item to 40. So you're noticing how I'm starting to combine elements in our design system to, to be utilized on top of other components such as these backdrops, which are like, which you can think of as these base layers, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to duplicate this. And we have now replicated our, our backdrop with the concealed front layer. So this front layer is concealed there. Um, we can even go ahead and make this a component as well be because uh, more often than not, uh, designers may be using this. And if we make this a component, designers can go ahead and just swap these elements as needed and rename uh, the text, I uh, these list items and whatnot as ne deemed necessary. So, or, or we could give them the, we can also offer, we could offer both variants essentially, right? So we have the the front layer conceal, which they can just drag and drop onto onto a design as needed, or we can give them this whole this whole example, which I'm going to go ahead and create. So I'm going to I'm going to rename this so concealed concealed. I'm going to la label this as concealed, and then this is just the front layer concealed. So now that that is good to go it is a master component and we are good to go and that is how you build out the backdrop variants for material design and i really appreciate you watching this video thank you all so much for watching and i hope you learned a lot i'll catch you in the next one